Howdy folks, and welcome to Coffee and Tools. We, uh, last week we said we were gonna give away something. In fact, it was uh, this little baby right here. We're having a draw on it. If you missed the programming, which some people might have, this is free to somebody's home here in the US or Canada. So anyway, we're giving that away. And all the tickets have been gathered from the uh, entrance. They're all in this lovely bucket here. So we're gonna draw a name and see who won this thing for this week. Now, just right before I, right before I draw, <laughs> the next item coming up for draw will be this one right here. The laser, uh, it's a en laser engraver, can also cut, has three laser heads in it. It's just under, I think, $300, so that's, a, that's gonna be a nice prize for somebody. It's all packed up, back in the box, and ready to ship out of here to whoever the winner is. In the meantime, like I said, in case you didn't see, in case you don't always tune in or you just tuned in for the very first time, we're, we had a draw last week and this week we're now pulling the ticket on somebody and we had a lot of, lot of entrance on this one. Really surprised me because I didn't think it was that popular tool, but hey, you know, great. You know, if somebody can use it, have at it, man, have at it. So the other thing we gotta do today is we're gonna do a topic about, uh, Something that doesn't cost much money, but can really make your woodworking a lot better. And, and it's, it's, it's not expensive. It's just one of those no brainers, but you know, sometimes a little help along the way, you know, helps some people. Hmm. So I'm gonna mix them up. Let's do this. Yeah. And we'll pull a ticket and see whose name we got here. Mm, there's somebody on the top here. Oh. I don't swear I've seen this guy. Be Bill, have you entered before? No, it just doesn't matter. There's no rules on this stuff. Just whoever, whoever draw. Uh, Bill Quinn and Pine Tops, North Carolina. Okay, I haven't got your name right, but we'll keep it a secret. <laughs> Put that aside. So anyway, yeah, let's, uh, congratulations, Bill. You have got this baby coming to you. And I thank you so much, of course, for watching Coffee and Tools. But this is now yours, Bill. I hope you I hope you use it, enjoy it, do whatever you want with it. Yeah, and thank you everyone for entering because I would like to I wish I had enough of these to send everybody one of those because uh there's a lot of great names in there that uh I recognize and go, oh yeah, definitely, you know. I wish I hope he wins, you know. But, but to do it fair, just draw one ticket out of the bucket and whoever is the winner is the winner. Meantime, we're gonna talk a little bit about a very inexpensive item that can make or break your work. We're gonna talk about what happens and why and you know, uh, just some, some clear uh, mental old school type thinking. Ooh, okay, let's get to that. And meantime, Bill, uh, this will be going out with bubble packed in a, I guess a priority box for you uh, tomorrow. And again, congratulations, and thank you everybody for entering. Uh, next week, I uh, wanna see all those names again on the, on the next one, because the laser engraver, that's a, that'll be the most expensive tool I think I've given away on the show since we started, but hey, bigger and better, right? Why not? So let's talk about the topic for Monday, and um, usually this is like a hack thing or, or whatever we're doing, but uh, today is gonna be, an interesting topic. Did I mention, please like, share, and subscribe. I always ask for that at the end of the show. But anyways, uh, right now, I wanna talk about the very first that you're gonna cut a piece of wood, the very first tool you're gonna to use is probably a tape measure. And if you're like me, you probably think, oh, a tape measure is a tape measure, is a tape. who cares, you know? And uh, a number of years ago, I noticed specifically, my work got kind of shoddy for a while. And what it was, was the tape measure. I had trouble reading it. It had, you know, those very, very fine black lines on it, but whoever had made the tape measure, and it was a cheapie from like Harbor Freight, it was really hard to read. And so after some frustration and a while, I suddenly realized one day, it was like, you know what? Just throw that in the trash and get a tape measure that's readable. And a couple of years ago, Craftsman came out. Well, okay, Craftsman and Stanley are almost, or they are virtually the same anyways, but I mean, let's just take a look for fun, but <laughs> there's the Stanley 16, there's the Craftsman 25. 
Yeah, they are look identical because they are. Well, there's a good reason for it, of course, because you own you. So, but Craftsman came out with the white uh, background tape measure with very clear lines on it, very easy to read. And the length of these lines has always told you the difference between uh, half inch and you know three quarter, quarter, that sort of thing. Even the one eighth, you know, you could sort of scale it out. But having trouble reading a tape measure can make or break your work and can create a lot of costs and a lot of issues. So I have determined after all these stupid years of working around wood that a good tape measure that works with you is worth more than you know $5.95 or whatever these things cost at the uh, big box store these days. And my old favorite standby was always, I always used to insist on Stanley only. But since this happened, uh, i sort of rethinking. I'm kind of liking the Craftsman. Before Stanley, I used to use a company called Lufkin. And Lufkin made some really awesome tape measures. I even have, I probably still have one up to 100 feet long. And my, I keep it. But it was a very expensive tape measure in its day. The power lock here, the problem with Stanley's is this yellow background is not, I don't know why that, I'm, I'm wondering why they ever came up with that color, but it's really not a bad color, I guess, for tape measures, but I found the white essentially just, it's more clean, it's more clear, it's more obvious, unless your wife takes a magic marker and says, oh, it's it's right here, and starts, you know, marking a tape measure, then, uh, yeah, we got another problem to talk about, maybe in the future, <laughs> but... Uh, let's take a look at a cheapie. <clears throat> this is a big, bad, cheap one, and it's from, uh, yeah, it gets you down here so you can actually see what's going on with these tape measures. How's that sound? Yeah, come on, let's, let's get on top of this. Okay, guys, I know it sounds crazy, but you would be, a, you'd just be surprised at how your work can depend on one of these gadgets, and we take them for granted, we don't think about them, but what I found was buy ones that you're comfortable with, that work, that you're, you're accurately, you can read. And let's check this one out right here. This, this, I really got to hand it to uh, Stanley <clears throat> at Crafts, with the Craftsman line with bringing these uh, out because these have a fabulous easy scale to read. They're nicely, nicely put. I had a cheap one that I don't have here anymore. Obviously threw it out in the trash but it was this sort of idea, something like this idea where there were so many lines and so much scribble on there that actually, well, take a look at this. This one even has the, uh, look at all these, the one eighth, you know, the three eighths and, and all the rest of it written here, plus all the lines. And after a while, if the wood part you wanted to mark, say was over here on this side, you'd look over here and you get really messed up and confused and you would screw up the cut. And so this is really, a tape measure that just shouldn't even be used around me or most shops because it just it just throws you off. I had one, like I said, that, th that I threw out. I wished I had kept it. This one here actually is not that far off, but what they did was they split the difference between the metric side here and the standard measurement side here. So the only reason I keep this around is because of the metric. Every once in a while when I'm working with 3D stuff, I need the metric, so I'll run this side of the tape measure and that's fine, especially if I'm having the length, you know, length, something long in the millimeters, I wanna get the right measurement on it. But uh, I actually have a couple of these. Here's another one, same thing, with the metric on one side, nice clear white on this side, but this is not that great tape measure to read because if you look at it, these lines are not real obvious and you can easily screw up instead of, you know, 11 16 so you got five eighths and it throws your work off. You know, that's just, that's the shame of it. And Stanley has always been, in my opinion, one of the best tape measures because they've always managed to get this grid really nicely laid out and really easy to read. You shouldn't be able to screw it up. Although this one here is not that great. It's not bad, but it's not like the one I, the one I should have kept all these little lines and everything were all the same length. And after a while it was like, 
you virtually can't tell the difference between three quarter, half inch, and a quarter, let alone the one eighth or anything else where things landed. So it messed up my work. It, it actually, I, I cut a number of boards wrong and it cost me time and money screwing around trying to fix something, especially in some cases where you have a special piece of lumber and it's like, I can't afford this to be wrong, you know, and it was wrong. So this is not that great. Uh, this here's an old, uh, an old one from Stan, uh, Stanley Powerlock. And again, it's not great. And notice how they, at the very last, they kind of thinned out the print right at the very end here on this. And that's even getting the, okay, it's got some wear, wear bars on it. But uh, this is, again, not an easy tape measure to read. And then I got this new Craftsman and I took a look at it and it said, you know, yowza, wow. I can take a quick look at this and I know what the measurement is. I can see it, I can read it, and I don't have a problem. I can go cut the piece of wood to that exact measurement, and I don't have to, you know, worry about screw ups. So this week, that was something I wanted to talk to you all about, was I took the tape measures out of my collection, so I actually used to have a lot more than this, and gave them away or even tossed them in the garbage can because they were causing problems. In fact, this one here sort of should go in the garbage, but the only reason I keep it is because of the virtual size, the uh, this size of this, that it will reach out really well, but it is not a tape measure to depend on. This is a good tape measure to depend on the, uh, the craftsman here. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, I'm so glad we had that heart-to-heart uh, -heart talk about tape measures. Uh, this one here, the metric one, uh, I was showing you a little earlier. This one was sent over to me from Germany from a uh, fellow that does nature type uh, film and video work. He's in eastern eastern Germany right now. Probably freezing his butt off because it's winter time. And, but I uh, want to thank him. I have kept this thing around here forever. I've had it for quite a few years now. And uh, we won't say anything more about him. We'll keep him a secret. <laughs> the whole thing is, is just... For the very little bit of money that these things cost, and uh, maybe a pencil, a good pencil, the uh, tape measure is really the next, you know, tool when you're a new, new to woodworking, get you a real good one. And not, not necessarily a big one, but one that you can work with, that you can read easily, you can read it accurately. When you see three quarter or seven eighths on there, you see it and you know that's what it is, and it is true to be exactly what it should be. Get your tape measure. Now, if you watch Sven Gulli, uh, Saturday night uh, we're gonna do a little on that uh, right now I'm taping this conversation okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to see how you guys measure up I want to see how long this would take okay anyway thank you so much for watching coffee and tools again this week and I just thought we'd have a little heart to heart about a, a basic tool that don't take it for granted get you a good one you know, and they might cost you five or six dollars or ten dollars, but get a good one and buy a good pencil too while you're at it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm out of here. Hey, over and out.